Good day, everybody. It's Randy Hilarski here. Today I have a special guest. I have Dan. Dan's with the CV Medical Centers up there in Mexico. And uh, he's got a topic that I am really keen on, stem cells. I know a lot of you guys don't want to know about stem cells as well. Um, I'm on my health and wellness journey as well. I'm doing peptides and human growth hormone and stuff like that. But Dan's got a special topic uh, I know a lot of you guys are going to be interested in. And uh, I want Dan to give a little bit of background. We did not do this one as a live stream because we wanted to hear his history and uh, tell tell you guys about stem cells, those kind of things. So it's not about questions today. It's about giving you guys the broad topic. And going forward, Dan and I are going to be doing biweekly live streams to be able to uh, inform you guys. So welcome, Dan. Thanks for showing up. Um, you know, I know that you've been following me for a long time. I'm so glad that you're here. Perfect. Thank you. Well, I'll, I'll make the majority of this in the first 10 minutes because right. it's hard to hold people on forever. But uh, the main thing, uh, you're a decaying organism. You know, we every day, every minute are stepping one step closer to an autoimmune condition, some type of organ failure. Uh, we can only be so lucky that some acute event happens in life because actually the majority of people and the mo longer I'm in this career, the more I see most people suffer their final months and years dealing with failing organs, dealing with autoimmune conditions and, and, and living in pain, you know, and, and actually another one is exhausting their resources or not having the resources to recover from something that, you know, either A, was preventable or B, treatable. Um, you know, I, I will, will kind of base it on that is that, you know, the first thing, the primary tool we use uh, in regenerative medicine is mesenchymal stem cells down here. You get it right out of the gate. This is not embryonic stem cells. There is no harm to mother or baby. It was an important thing for me. Um, you know, these are live, healthy births. These women are screened years before they ever make a donation. Uh, it's very ethical. These women are paid highly. Um, and as far as the number of donors, people think like, oh, is there, is there too many of them? Is the screening? The reality is we can treat tens of thousands of patients per year on very few donations, less than 10 patients. So, wow, really? Yes, yeah, so because the big deal is the way they cultivate the cells, and from very small pieces of tissue, they can cultivate billions of cells. Wow. It's, it's a very complicated process. I mean, it's really, it's, it's not really on the doctor's side. Of it's on the science. It's, it's biologists that you know, cultivate these. Um, and, you know, again, Mexico versus the United States, these things are being done in the United States. Just typically, you don't have the access to the people that can get it for you or the resources. In the, in the States, they make you jump through a ton of red tape, you know, you hear about it in the news, athletes, celebrities, politicians, they're doing it, you know, but you're like, okay, how are they getting this? You know, they, they loosely donate money to, say, you know, a university in the States and, you know, they, end quote, get a free stem cell treatment. Um, so what, uh, you know, Mexico, Panama, Colombia, Germany, socialized medicine countries, what they now have is they have a little bit of like a hybrid healthcare system in the sense they still have socialized medicine which brought this into the existence in the first place of how you can come by it um, but second you know capitalism in that environment also made a better product so you know to to touch base on that is is really greed is the reason that you can't get them in the states and greed is the reason you can get them down here absolutely so, um you know it, the more you look at the medical industry as a business and less like medical care, the more it makes sense. Once you get past it, that there is no industry in the world hidden from greed. I mean, I'm sure somebody could come up with one or two, but you know, the the especially in regards to healthcare, you know, in, in the last 25 years, the majority of these physicians, you know, work for a large conglomerate hospital. They have mountains of debt. Uh, you know, they have a, a narrow range of tools available to them, so mostly pharmaceutical drugs or, you know, surgery, essentially. And they can only sell within that very narrow window to you if you have an issue. And, you know, even if they did think there would be benefit towards these types of treatments like offered here, because it's not in their network, you know, they could be let go on the same reason, you know, why you see people go on in these careers and, you know, they want to do the right thing and it's not that they're doing a bad thing up there. They just don't have the tools at their disposal to treat it. Um, because with insurance and licensing, these are natural treatments. 
You can't and, and quotas and quotas. These doctors have quotas they have to fill. And I remember as a psych nurse, you know, patients would come in and they were they're doing OK on their specific medication. But all of a sudden there would be a bonus out there for the doctor for getting as many patients as possible on Zyprexa or some other medication like that. And all of a sudden they're switching all of their patients over to Zyprexa when the patient was already fine. They were already doing well on the certain medication. And uh, it's, it's really sad. You know, uh, that's, that's that old saying, you know, a patient cured is a is a is a client lost, you know, <laughs> exactly. Know, and and that's where in the states, you know, people look at this you know, cruelly, but it, it is the reality is that you know, tons and tons of money is pumped in to form these pharmaceutical drugs, uh, you know, from all the funding, all the studies, all the other, the trials, and then when they're administered, you know, they have to recoup all those funds that they had to pay for. And Dan, could you turn your gain up just a little bit more? Yes, I can. I could probably speak a little closer in the microphone too there you, yeah that helps there you go a lot yeah i have it turned down because just be aware everyone i am uh located here in a, in a medical tower it's very close to the, the u.s border uh and so it, it can be quite eclectic behind me but i tell you i'm 600 feet from the border it's right there it's <laughs> the back window so it, uh yeah it, it's, it's extremely convenient beautiful tower you know i, I love being here never in my life but i thought i would be living in tijuana mexico uh, operating a stem cell clinic, but here I am, um, which, you know, le leads into the, you know, the next part of the conversation, which is kind of my background, you know, again, coming up on six minutes, the, my point Yeah, what the is, hell are you doing in Mexico, bro? Yeah, man, it, it uh, so to let you know, I mean, I, I'm sure a lot of your community following you, you know, they're, they're crypto people, okay, so I, uh, I medically retired from the Air Force, and then nearly simultaneously, uh, did quite well in the 17, 18 bull run. Um, got an ETH early, came out well. Uh, not heavy in the seven figures yet, but, you know, had several hundred thousand dollars. And I was sitting there looking at, you know, what my options were in the States. I was already watching you and, and, and others, and I saw you make a life in Panama. And, you know, I had spent a lot of time overseas in the Air Force. And I'm like, you know, I, I don't think the U.S. is going to be where I settle. Um, I said, you know, let, let, let me let me start with Mexico. You know, and I'd lived in Italy for several years in Korea and Asia and all this. But I really. Or were you in Aviano? Uh, I was actually at Camp Darby. Um, it, it's it's uh, it's an annex of Aviano. Okay, okay, all right. Um, they were so Aviano for Munition Squadron is the thirty first, and Aviano is the second thirty first. Uh, all right, we were up there. We took, I took my family up there uh, a year and a half ago. We stayed in Padua for okay. about three weeks and loved the area. Absolutely yeah. loved it. Fantastic. I mean, I, I really, I, I my, my career and what I had, I mean, it, it was uh, amazing overseas travel. I got exactly what I wanted in the military. I, you know, I joined, I wanted to see the world and hadn't seen anything at 18 when the military broke and, I, you know, come out and I had, you know, 800 credit scores, some money saved up and I had, uh, you know, traveled over 40 countries. So it, and it, the barrier it, of traveling, you no longer had that fear. Um, right. Like when I moved to Panama, there was no fear in my heart about moving down here. Whereas most Americans who don't leave their hometowns or barely their state, if you tell them move abroad, they're like, oh, I, I can't do that. Well, military cures you of that. <laughs> it, it does. Yeah, it gives you a different lens to look at the world. And, um, you know, I, I was looking at that, but, you know, simultaneously, I was dealing with some injuries that was really bothering me. Um, you know, I, I had a knee issue and, and I actually was working with the VA, um, you know, and I, I basically I was uh, had a you know, profile and I was getting to the point of being undeployable because my knee was so messed up and um, just incident that happened while I was you know, in the Air Force. And, and so I was looking at doing stem cells with the VA. They do uh, bone marrow drive. I was like, oh, that sounds good. I was in my late 20s at the time. And I said, OK, you know, let me try that. And they worked. Like wow. they really improved my knee considerably, and and going into it, they're like, "Yeah, Dan, you're probably going to be looking at a joint replacement at 40." Like ride motorcycles and ski, and you know, <laughs> all these things. Like that's that's really bleak, you know. And so I did those, and I was like, "Man, that was great!" Like, can I do it again? They're like, uh, "Unfortunately, it's you're going to wait at least a year," and it's like, "And you may or may not do a stem again." It's like, that was super simple. How why can't you just do it like next week? He's like, "Is there an office up the street?" They're like, "No, nah, I don't work like that." And again, this was, you know, about seven years ago. Um, and a guy at the VA said, you know, Dan, you spent so much time overseas. 
you really ought to look at going down to like Mexico or Panama or Colombia or somewhere like that and doing theirs. And I was like, well, why don't they go down there? They're like, well, you get a whole lot more of them uh, for a lot cheaper. You know, get nothing there. And I was like, okay. And closer to the mic. Dan, yeah, closer to the mic. Closer to the mic, yeah. I was yeah. like, that's, that's a lot better for me. And so, you know, so I, I originally, I got scheduled and I started looking up. And, and the main one I looked up, uh, especially was very popular at the time, was, was Dr. Neil Riordan uh, with the Institute in Panama. Um, so, I mean, he is, he is the pioneer of this industry. Uh, you know, the, the industry would not exist in the way it does without him. He wrote the main book on it, Stem Cell, A Rising Tide. I recommend anybody watching this read, read that book. You know, regardless if you come do stem cells with us, you know, anywhere, it, it's, it's, it's a big industry. Um, there's incredible cells out there, but you do have to be selective where you get them. Um, and, you know, Dr. Riordan's is world class. But given he is the top one and, you know, extremely high demand, it's very, very expensive. And <laughs> yeah. even, even his is, you know, and even for some folks that's done well in crypto, you sit there, look at the numbers, and you're like, oh, my gosh, you know, this is, this is $40,000 for 140 million cells, and I'm looking at reading three, 400 of them, and I might have to come back a second time. That gets a little bit tougher for a lot of people. You know, versus, you know, with us, you're getting two and three times as many cells for, you know, nearly less than half the cost. Yeah, uh, here, I, what I found with Mr. or Dr. Reardon is that most of the people that are coming down here are celebrities or, you know, famous folks like the the actor for Thor. He was just here getting some treatments. Um, who's uh, who's the famous guy? Uh, Braveheart. Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. Yeah, that, that's the most famous video you're going to see out there. I mean, that really set the tone for the industry. Um, and, I'm, you know, I, I love the movie. I'm yeah. a fan of Mel Gibson. You know, I'm not <coughs> movies. But, um, but, yeah, so that's uh, around that time, that's what got me interested. And then I found out how expensive that was. Oh, that looks good. And I actually, ironically, I called someone at Panama, and I told them. And that guy was a vet, too. And he said, you know what, Dan, you really ought to. Call Mexico. Like there, 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 there's, a, there's a laboratory in Guadalajara you need to get a hold of. Like we've worked with those biologists. They're doing the exact same thing. Uh, the, you know, the difference is, is they have so many patients in Mexico. Like Panama is a really small country, and there's really just really Dr. Riordan. You know, there's some other small places, but uh, not, not to his caliber. But in Mexico, there's hundreds of millions of people here. So they can, you know, administer, the, and the socialized government is funding it. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, which leads back to my point of the same greed that keeps it out of the United States is what gets it here. So in the United States, they want to try to, they want to help you. They want to fix you and they want you coming back, but they want to try to you know, give you the most treatment possible for the most expense possible, okay? In Mexico, they've already stolen the money. They, they've already taxed people to death. And you know, Mexico's known that if they, they've taxed all those people for that and they don't take care of the health care system or they don't take care of finances. Well, they kill politicians here every now and then, which is something I don't mind. You know, I mean, <laughs> really, I'm, I mean, how I got in this community is I, I look at the world a certain way. And, you know, if if certain politicians are, you know, stealing the money and there's, you know, people, you know, dying of illnesses that they very well should be treated, such as you know, diabetes, they can't get insulin and things like that. So, Mexico went through a pandemic of, you know, obesity, you know, and, and type 2 diabetes. So the first thing it was really licensed for use here for was type 2 diabetes. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah, so, like, I mean, there was a few other conditions, but that was the main one. The government is like, okay, we'll put as much money into this as we need to. So is this mainly for like, let's, let's make it broader here. Is that, would it help with like insulin resistance? It helps with insulin resistance. And actually, you know, a lot of times you have you know, improper signaling at the pancreas, you have inflammation of the pancreas. And so, um, you know, it, it addresses that um, primarily. And then so alongside a diet and, you know, things like say semaglutide to lose weight, um, you know, you just see people, they start their, their insulin sensitivity and response heightens and you see their blood sugars coming down. I mean, I actually have, uh, you know, a partner in this, his blood sugar was as high as 478. Oof. Yes, and now, you know, again, he still has to manage it with, you know, uh, he, he, he doesn't need to use insulin, but he uses uh, like uh, trizipatide, you know, the, and, and then, um, you know, which is a peptide. And, and he's able to keep his levels under 120. 
Like, I mean, he's, wow. he's essentially reversed it now again. If he went out there and ate, you know, a few dozen donuts, it might get off the chart. Yeah. But, you know, he was never able to accomplish that previously just with trizipatide or diet and all that, you know. So you've got to meet the stem cells halfway, um, you know, you, you know, especially if you've already abused it really badly. But they can recover it, and, you know, it can improve that. A lot of patients, um, you know, at least if they are on a ton of insulin, they can reduce the amount they're taking. And so the government said, okay, we're going broke paying for insulin and metformin. So first thing they did, they rolled it out for, uh, for everyone for type 2 diabetes. And then they found out, oh, my gosh, we can treat knees that are going bad. We can treat shoulders that are going bad. And the government sees that as like, oh, it's a few thousand dollars to pre-treat these patients yeah. and heal this condition versus paying for what would be in the States, a full-blown joint replacement. That's, you know, by the time everything's said and done between the device itself, the surgery, every time they scope it. And the lifetime care. care. They're going to lifetime care. medications. Yes. Right? You know, I mean, you're, you're easily 50 to $100,000 in per joint. And you got two knees and two hips. I mean, shoulders go out. You know, so it's just a, it's, a, it's a money farm up in the States. In Mexico, they look at the opposite. It's a burden. The government's like, ah, oh, we're going to have to address this. We're going to have to fix this. How can we, how can we have the best benefit possible, for the least cost possible, in the healthiest way possible, in the lowest side effect way? And that's not a sales pitch. It's just reality. Like, you know, life tells you that. Follow the money. You understand? Like, okay, why is the, why is the Mexican government investing? Do you think that the prices of the stem cell treatments will be coming down? Yes, and they and they have year over year. I mean. Right now, you know, the, the, the big thing um, is, is really just the logistics. Um, uh, you know, a lot, previously it was difficult to get to some of these locations to get to them. Um, so now that's coming down. And then just the more volume of patients. Because in Mexico, you know, it, it is, it, there are specialty insurance programs. You know, again, it's hard to find them on the Internet because they're all in Spanish and on the BiotMX website. But you can pay, like, let's say you're a Mexican business person. you got to very uh, successful taco stand business. And there's a lot of them here. And they make good money. And you go, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm in my 50s, 60s. I want to invest in one of these plans, and I want stem cells. I want that to be a part of my yearly regimen. And so what they do is they pay in to this thing every year, and then that company, you know, collects a ton of those, and then what they do is they go in and buy stem cells in massive bulk from the laboratory to get those costs down. So, you know, there are you know, insurance programs available to do that for private insurance, um, mostly groups. Um, but most of the time you got to speak Spanish and, you know, you also, uh, you know, kind of got to be a little bit in the know and deal like under the, you know, the, the Mexican tax structure and things like that for it to really be, really be beneficial. And so that's where like kind of I have now came in where there's this whole machine here in Mexico while stem cell seems new to say, I'm sure a lot of your audience is United States people, uh, it seems new. It's not. I mean, it's been commonplace in Mexico for 20 years. Um, they're called cellulas madres here, the mother cells. Yep. Um, very, very commonplace here. And, you know, so they're very accessible. Everybody's heard of them. In the United States, what you hear from is clinics that are targeting to Americans specifically, and that's all they do. Um, you know, so a lot of times they spend a ton of funding to, like, say, you know, like a UFC fighter or different athletes and things like that to drive, you know, eyeballs and traffic down here. And unfortunately, a lot of those places are, you know, very young laboratories with you know, really subpar cells. And, um, you know, they got a really beautiful front end. You know, transportation's great. You know, you saw your favorite person go there. It's a really nice science experience, nice medical experience. But then, you know, the laboratory's been operating for five years, unseasoned biologist, you know, you're just not getting the quality of cells that comes with, you know, a long tenure of experience and particularly working with the better laboratories. And so I work with uh, CB Cells Laboratory. You know, they're, they are one of the only, if not the only now, uh, research laboratory in Mexico that's published clinical research for their cells. Um, I've personally worked with you know, almost 3,000 patients over the last five years um, directly just like this conversation going here, going through these problems. And I just work as an international liaison to it. Um, you know, it, it, 
essentially most of your questions kind of get exhausted at me and you know and then based upon your condition I put your either your paperwork or yourself in front of a physician that is going to break down particularly what they can do to treat yours so the doctor only has to spend you know 15 minutes with you whereas you might spend an hour with me asking anything and everything that's relevant questions but you know you just don't know because most of the information about this is either in Spanish or difficult to find absolutely it's difficult uh, yeah unless you buy the books you know because there's a couple books out there but just general knowledge that's why I think us doing a bi-weekly stream uh, after a while it's going to start getting a lot of attention just like uh, there's a couple of people out there who have uh, gotten very famous just doing you know weekly live streams talking about peptides and <laughs> you know these guys five, six years ago, nobody was talking about peptides. Now, everyone's talking about semaglutide and trizepatide. You know, I personally, I started taking trizepatide a month ago, you know, injecting myself every Monday. And uh, at night, I take tessamorlin, which, you know, helps me naturally produce more HGH. And uh, I I'm feeling wonderful, wonderful now. And uh, I'm losing the weight like crazy. And, you know, just uh, uh, 10 months ago, I was 370. And now I'm down to 340. So, you know, the <laughs> that's 30 pounds it, and it's not it's not overnight weight loss right it's not that just melts right off your body but it's a slow steady pace and i much prefer that right yes yes because you come in with your own host of side effects and you drop it too quickly i think, yeah. I think that's really the only thing is that both those medications are well tolerated and, that, yes. and it, again this isn't a ah oh, everything the american healthcare system does is bs it's not well, well, actually, let, let's make it clear, though. Peptides are not medication. They're right. not pharmaceuticals. Right. They're they're Yeah, they're just strands of uh, like you know, what's called like amino acids or amino acids, polypeptide amino acids. Yeah. So it's much more natural and your body tolerates it very well because your body already makes them. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, there are, um, you know, meaning like big pharma marketing them in the sense yeah. that we, we go V and, um, you know, Ozempic is kind of the brand names. Semiglutide is, is the actual medication name for it. For, this is for people out there who don't know. You know, semiglutide is the active ingredient in, uh, in Ozempic. Yeah, I've got about, uh, I got about a six month supply downstairs of a semiglutide. I have a two year supply of trizepatide. Because what happened with uh, trizepatide is the US or the company that, uh, that is marketing it, they don't want it on the market anymore. So they're, they're making it difficult to get which is typical of the pharmaceutical companies. They want to have, you know, 100% control. And uh, so, you know, I get mine straight from Hong Kong. <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's great stuff. So I don't want to dive too much into peptides tonight. We'll get, we'll have plenty of time to do that. But, you know, uh, give us some stories. Give us some really cool, you know, um, rebound stories of people getting better from using the stem cells. Yeah, so that, I mean, that, leads off to where, you know, I came down for my own treatments and then, you know, I, I fixed my knee and I knew that and I'd done them in the past, but then I go to look at my blood work. I'll be honest, I was in the military, drank heavy anabolic steroids, name it, you know, and I had some issues with my liver. I had some issues that were showing up with my kidneys and they're like, would you like to address this? Like, well, how would you do that? You, know, you can do them intravenously. And I was pretty hesitant and I'm like, so it works for my knees and it works for everything else too. Like, that's <laughs> and then they're like, oh, yes. And then all of a sudden, you know, I go to look around at patients and then, you know, there's a patient there with congestive heart failure that flew in from England. And, you know, she had in 90 days went from 35% ejection fraction to 55%. And I can share that document to you. It's like Northern Lincolnshire and Gould. I remember was at the cardiology department there. I was sitting there looking at it and, and she they can't looking, understand you know, they're like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, she had been dealing with it for two years and then, you know, no improvement, only getting worse. She goes back and then, of course, they're on their high horse. Like, oh, yes, we, we've resolved her congestive heart failure. No further activity is needed. In 90 days, it fixed it. Well, you know, so she was at 55%. Now she's, like, well over 65%. So, you know, when you're talking about CHF, you know, it's below 50% ejection fraction of the left ventricle. Once you start getting, you know, down in the 30s, you know, your, your quality of life is going to diminish. Oh yeah. Shortness of breath. You're going to get yeah. tired really quick. You know? Yeah. It's not fun. And, and nearly all of us, if cancer or another autoimmune condition or run over by a truck or whatever, doesn't get you at some point, at some point you will deal with that. You will deal with a failing heart. Um, and so that's where stem cells really come from is that, you know, they're not only corrective, they're preventative. You know, 
a lot of these issues, these weakening tissues, is because, you know, we, we lose 90% of our stem cells at bone maturity. And so by adding these live healthy cells in there, we're able to, you know, heal and recover these tissues that haven't had these young live healthy cells in such a long time. Well, the, so that was that case with the, the expert. And then I go to look at and some other close ones, you know, that I was really amazed at was uh, like autoimmune conditions, like even, even psoriasis. I've had so many patients on there. Eczema and psoriasis is a big one. People deal with it all the time. Yeah, there's nothing you can do for it. You rub cream on it. And, I mean, I can, uh, you know, show you text of, like, you know, my neighbor, for example. My hers was dramatic. She dealt with it for, like, 50 years. And in a matter of days, it was completely gone. Um, wow. You know, some other stories. Uh, I can think of a patient. Um, I don't know if there's a way to upload the video, but... There's a patient, she had uh, developed tardive dyskinesia. Really never heard of the term when she first called, but. I never heard of that one. Yeah, she basically had had an issue with uh, a pharmaceutical drug called Abilify. It's anti-psychotic medication. Anyway. Horrible um, stuff. Yeah, really, really bad stuff. Um, stay away from it. You get sunshine and you, you know, live in Mexico or Paraguay. <laughs> <laughs> it fix most of your unhappiness. Um, so a lot of coastline. But, um, you know, so she, she basically developed this condition where she was essentially blind because she, she couldn't open her eyes. Like, like she had this involuntary writhing of her face. And it, was, it was a really dramatic video. And, you know, was looking at the case and was like, okay, um, you know, what can we do to try to improve this? And so what we did was they did an injection, a modified facial to the trigeminal nerve, and then did an intrathecal, which is where they put the stem cells in the spinal fluid. And the thing is, is that they can only help. The, the, the biggest thing with these treatments, the worst outcome you can have is waste your money. But is, is what? Is waste your money. You know, uh, waste your money. There's no downside. They, they lack <laughs> HLA, human leukocyte antigen. You know, they, there, there's no risk of rejection uh, with, with these stem cells. And, you know, the, the biggest you know, result is if when you're looking at the price, if you say, okay, I've tried everything else fix this issue and you give stem cells a try and the worst outcome is that you just you had the cost but you know you can just read over and over how well it works well, anyway for that case that's what i told her i said look guys you know, i know you come from new york i don't know what your financial situation is but you've tried everything else it sounds like you're miserable i mean she was borderline suicidal she was on antipsychotic medication in the first place and so i said look i, I think this is an option for you since you have no other options so at least give it a try and I remember I, we treated them, and they were going to stay. Uh, I was in Vallarta at the time, and they were going to stay for a few days. And then I went to the mountains, and I started getting texts from her daughter. She's like, oh, my gosh, this is a miracle. I was really? Like, oh, I was like, is she already seeing improvement? I mean, this is like 36 hours later, which typically results take much longer. But really, mm -hmm. really dramatic conditions like this do tend to respond really quick. And I was like, you tell me. And then she sends me a picture of her. And quite literally, she's just sitting there with her eyes open, just looking up at the camera. I'm like, oh, my gosh. She's like, this is a miracle. You, you've made my life. Like, <laughs> yeah, I can probably find that real quick here. <laughs> that's pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, like, real stuff. I mean, it, like, that, that's why I say, like, to, to give the background, I, you know, I know how I want to live my life. I know how much money it takes to live the way I live. And, you know, I, I semi-retired, you know, eight years ago. And... Six years ago, um, I was looking into it eight years ago. Solidified it in 2018 after the run, and um, you know, and so I started looking at fixing my own issues, and then you know, I come down and I did treatment, had phenomenal results, and so I just started referring a lot of people, and I had buddies with the VFW. Uh, I was actually part of the chapter out of the Philippines, and then they're like, "Man, you going down there doing them stem cells?" I was like, yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, hey, would you mind coming and talking to some of these guys? I was like, "Yeah, sure, why not?" I go, I'm expecting three or four guys, three, 50 people. What? Oh, yeah. They, they set me up. I'm like, holy cow. I'm like, so you're the stem cell man. <laughs> I don't know about all that. I am now. <laughs> I was like, yeah. I was like, but I was like, I'll tell you what you need to know because I'd already read all the books and done treatment and had success. And really, like, they knew they wanted stem cell treatment. You can't sell stem cell treatment. It's medical treatment. You either, you know, or looking towards it and you want to get it or you don't and we just make it easier for you to get it give you a convenient location show you all the certifications you need for the cells and make it convenient for americans to get treatment 
And so, um, you know, with that, so, I, you know, I started talking to those guys, and then just one after another after another. I met my fiance in Vallarta, and then I just started living full time. And I just was call after call, and then eventually the doctor and them said, you know, Ben, like, why don't you just come in and just start working with us? You know, like, <laughs> these patients want to see you because I'm, I'm bringing them in myself anyway, so hanging out with them, you know, they, you know, get a margarita, you know, earlier in the week before they get treatment. We don't recommend drinking alcohol on the day of treatment, but <laughs> you, know, you, you won't hurt them. Um, you know, but anyway, we, we, we go out and, uh, you know, I, I keep assisting them and keep bringing them through treatments. And um, finally, they just said, you know, why don't you just stick around? And then it's turned into a full-blown career. And, you know, I was offered the opportunity that now working directly with the laboratory, I said, <coughs> you know, the hardest part really has been logistics. And, you know, Port of Arch is a beautiful place. I love living there. But, you know, there's difficult getting flights in there. I mean, there's a lot of direct flights, but. It's, it's Let's be beautiful. honest. Mexico's a pain in the ass to travel around. It's, it's a pain. It really is a pain, and then you gotta get to your hotel, and then you gotta get took to your appointment, and then you get taken back to your hotel, and then you got an appointment the next day, and then you gotta go back again, and so just logistically challenging. And so I said, you know what? If if I really want to do this and help as many people as possible, you know, like where we can get costs down, you know, do you know do treatments more in volume, you know, the number one thing is maintain the quality stem cell source, and the more patients we do, generally the you know the cost goes down, and so. Um, the, the, the Tijuana border was looked at. And so I, here in the New City Medical Tower, um, you know, we're, we're administering to patients particularly. And so what here all you have to do, you fly into San Diego, you stay on the San Diego side, you don't gotta bring your bags into Mexico. And what we do is we pick you up in a sprinter van, picks you up uh, typically around 9, 30, 10 a.m. It brings you across, you're gonna be with us for the day. Beautiful tower, there's nice restaurants, everything, and you're in a extremely secure compound. I live here on site. I'm in one of the residential towers. Two-year-old daughter, blonde hair, blue eyes. We stick out, you know, like a sore thumb, you know, and literally no issues whatsoever for people concerned about that. Um, you know, but it, it's, uh, we take you back to the United States that evening. We have a medical fast pass, so you bypass the border really quickly. And so, you know, you're sleeping in the U.S. side. You're only in Mexico for treatments, and we take you right back for people with those concerns. And, you know, you rest and relax in San Diego, which is one of my favorite cities in the United States. Um, and so we just make it super convenient to get these treatments. And, and, and that, that has really been um, getting a lot more attention now. We're like, all right, yeah, I, I'm leaving you. I want, I want those stem cells. I want that doctor. You know, just, is there any way I can get them in a more convenient I remember when uh, Chris called me about what was about three, three, four weeks ago. He called me from the clinic, yeah. and uh, he, he showed me the video around how full it was. And I was like, "Wow, you guys just opened this clinic and you're already packed like this? That is pretty darn cool." <laughs> yeah, the big deal, you know, is we have, like I said, I've, I've worked with almost three thousand people, and I, and I keep a, you know, I'm surprised at how relationship with so many people it gets tough if it's been a, a couple years since i met you but like after i get a little bit into the story and hear names like oh yeah i remember you and you know absolutely their stories they tell and you know so we already have like a, this large patient base you know and you know they, they they've continued to come with us and, and this is really more about like you know they're like hey you know i got some referrals but it's just hard to get them down to qb or hard to get them down to guadalajara like you got anything more convenient and i said working on it you know like that that th this location here is the most convenient by far like i said you really you only have one full day and you commit to this the other side of each day is just traveling you know whether you fly into lax or you fly into san diego um and and so and people with concerns or there's also sides of if you're on oxygen you know if, if you have some issue you know you're on a, a motorized wheelchair and travel is difficult that's another thing that this location makes it much more convenient. Trust me, I love PV. I love living, you know, down there and living the retired lifestyle. But I've, I've seen, you know, the, the, the mission is bigger than me. I'm still a pretty young man. Um, I, I can kind of see, you know, financially, this crypto run will probably, you know, put me in a position that I don't need to worry about. I'm already in a good spot now. But, you know, this is just about, you know, like I, I started in the beginning. We're going to deal with 
you know, failing organs at some point or another. We're going to deal with joints that are failing, and, and I was spending my own money on this, and, and, you know, I feel obligated to tell as many people as possible and say, hey, like, it's real. These tools are at your disposal. You've got to, you know, just look outside the United States to get to do it. Absolutely. I've got something that we, we discussed before. Um, you know, I told you I have uh, HPV breakouts in my back occasionally. Uh, it started happening a lot when I moved to Panama. Um, I, you know, this happened since I was a kid. Uh, but yeah, I get these like when I go out in the sun or I get stressed, like fight my wife or something, I, <laughs> I might get a breakout and it'll be, you know, right at the end, top of my crack of my ass there. And it's yeah. really annoying. And uh, I, I asked a doctor one time, as I said, is this shingles? And he said, no, it's not shingles. I said, are you sure? I'm pretty sure it's a form of herpes. And he goes, he's like, oh, no, no, I don't think so. Yeah, right. And I went to another doctor, a dermatologist, because uh, I was just happened to have a, a, a breakout beginning when I was going in for a minor surgery. And I asked her, I said, doc, what is that? And she told me, he goes, oh, that's that's just basic herpes. You, got, you, know, you just got to deal with it for the rest of your life. And you told me that you guys have a new treatment. Yes. For, for, for herpes for with stem cells and bro, I was like, yeah. please God, let this work. So I want to get this done <laughs> ASAP. Yeah, that, yeah. That's actually for, you know, for the event in January, that's, that's what I'm trying to coincide that I've already been speaking with the physicians about that because yeah. But what are you speaking of? We have a, my Patreon, uh, patreon.com backslash no permissions. We have a group and we're having a big conference here in January here in Panama. It's going to probably be right around a hundred people. And uh, that's what he's discussing. So we'd like to get this done uh, and use me as an example. And because I, I generally have about two to three breakouts per year, it'd be pretty easy to figure out whether it worked or not. Yes. And, and you'll know quite quickly. And, and like, I'll, I'll show you a text right now on my phone. Um, it's just another one just to, just to talk about that um, is with this condition, you know, I had a number of patients telling me just from the stem cell. And so th this is this is for example, and let me see if I can do it without showing his name, which I've worked with him for so long. I don't think it would bother. And this works for people that get you know cold sores and every other ver version of herpes as well, right? Yes. So you know, it, HSV. You know, HSV one typically primarily affects the lips. HSV two typically affects the genitals. You know, then you get into shingles and things like that. But you know, the the big deal is you know stem cells and and, the, and these and these natural treatments. What tissues are being affected, and um, you know where what you see with the stem cells? What patients I think is happening is it's it's boosting their immune system so much. So like we said, when you get stressed, and you know, or you get in fire, or whatever, you know, cortisol levels spike, and, and what happens is you, you, your your immune system lowers, and then so that causes this outbreak. That's why it's so common if you get sick, you can get them wherever you're affected. You know, the weather change, like it's really common. Like HSV one is extremely common. Mexico. You see so many, as soon as the weather gets cold, everybody's got a big cold sore. Oh, really? You know? Yeah, it's just really common here. And um, so, you know, those patients dealing with that, well, by just doing the stem cells, you, you boost the immune system such that it becomes so robust that you, you deal with that issue less. And I have enough patients that said, you know, putting them in remission. Uh, but the, the next big thing is, is NK cells, natural killer cells. So those, uh, every day you produce natural killer cells. And they attack, you know, say, you know, cancer cells. They, you know, they attack you know, also viral cells, things like that. And, you know, th those is what's in particular. It's by getting them from a donor. They they aren't produced by your own body because, like HSV virus, it's good at hiding from your immune system. That's why it lies dormant and then it comes out and it lies dormant and it comes out. I mean, it's one of the oldest conditions known. Uh, herpes simplex virus, in, in one form or another, has been affecting people for thousands of years. You know, they've called it multitudes of different names. Um, and so by doing those twofold effects where you're, you're, you're treating it, and, and we feel the best protocol is you're going to get site-specific with cells, you're going to treat them systemically, and then you're also going to do the NK cells. And so you're, it's a multifaceted approach. And that's going to be your dramatic best chance of, of what we think. And I've had people say it's removed off their blood work, or B, at least you're not symptomatic. What shows up on your blood work? What is it? So you, you can sh you can show if you look in a blood work, like say for example HSV one or HSV two, I think it is you know, diagnosed herpes. It, it will tell you which strain it is. Um, okay. You just you just like you know a, a, a normal. They're really common in Mexico. They call like 
agnostic. You know, you go in there and you just select markers, you know, and you, know, you can kind of request like an STD panel and, you know, they do a blood test, urinalysis and all that. But just say you're specifically there, tell them the site specific. Uh, if you have an outbreak, they can do a biopsy, but usually they can do it in a blood work. Um, but, uh, yeah, let me, let me pull this one up real quick. I, I really, I really want to show you this just because it's, 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 it's not, it's not BS. I mean, he, he was one of the ones that was first telling me, and he reminds me every time I talk to him. I'll just, <laughs> I'll just be frank. This, this gentleman. Because it's so uncomfortable, you know? Is, so when you, when you, okay, so for example, my wife and I fight. <laughs> knockout drag out right? right and then three or four days later i start to have flu-like symptoms yep right and then i can feel the 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 pain in my back where i'm about to have a, a, a breakout of it and right and that part after that then it starts getting really painful for like two or three days and then it goes away <laughs> but i'd rather not let, let me see if you can you can see this uh, I, yeah it says good evening dan I want you to read it. I, it's not clear. I'll, it's, I'll read it. Sorry, about it. Right. Uh, good morning, Dan. Hope your newborn is doing well. This is right after I had my daughter. So, um, as well, your beautiful wife. Hope you're still running your boat. Anyway, just a little interesting thing, which I believe is because of your stem cells and your treatments. I've had herpes for 40 years, and I went and got tested for all the STDs, and they all came back negative. Whoa. So I've had a history for over 40 years, and I don't have them anymore. So, this is unbelievable. Wow. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. Had so many patients later, like it's hard to get that information out of people because it's a condition that typically isn't going to kill you. It just really affects your life and bothersome, and it can cause nerve pain later. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it does, you know, uh, cause some issues, and it can, especially a woman, you know, that's going to have a baby. You know, you can potentially pass it to the baby, but yeah. um, you know, it, it, it is uh, generally well tolerated. It's just very annoying for, for most people. So uncomfortable. That's what it is. Yeah, it's just uncomfortable. And and so, you know, most people don't tell you that. But then I just have patient after patient after patient telling me that. I'm like, man. I was like, how come nobody's talking about this? And then I go talk with the biologist and doctor like, yes, we treat all the time. Like, why didn't you tell me that? Like, <laughs> this is a huge thing. They're like, it's huge. They're like, you didn't ask. I'm like, no. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it, it is really amazing. I mean, just how much more robust and how big, you know, the regenerative medicine industry is in Mexico and just how behind the curve we are in the United States because we've just got so much propaganda. You know, I, I just, I just want to be the Guinea pig. And then, yeah. you know, if this, this ends up working out as good, as I think it's going to, then I'll be screaming from the rooftops. Right. Yeah. And, and I think this is one of those conditions that, you know, it's a visual thing, you know, like we treat say peripheral neuropathy, you know, that's a, have patient after patient after patient. And for, for those who don't know, that's numbness, numbness and tingling in the toes and the fingers. Yeah. And, and, and so I have patient after patient tell me like how much it's improved their lives, their pain, they've, you know, they got their feet back, their feeling. Are these people that are mostly diabetic? Mostly diabetic. Yeah. But we deal with a lot of MS too. Um, okay. And it's alluded to in that book, but basically so many of those patients, but then, you know, you can't really measure that. It's, you you, you got to take that verbal testimony. You know, there, there's not, you know, blood work for that or anything else. But, you know, things like, you know, seeing if they're type 2 diabetes and seeing their blood work back to back. But even then, you know, people arguing with that. Herpes is one of those that, you know, there, there's so few of things that you can even do. It's basically, that, you know, there's antivirals that you take that just keep from the outbreaks. But it messes with your immune system in the first place. What's interesting is it actually deteriorates your immune system. And so... They've sold this basically perfect drug that you are on perpetually, you know, uh, you know, if you're wanting to try to take it constantly. And then what it actually ends up doing is affecting your own production of NK cells. And so you end up later more prone to other issues and cancers and things like that. So, yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it, it's a bleak outlook for it, for something that, uh, you know, is really right in stem cells and NK cells wheelhouse. I would like to do, you know, more studies with this. And, you know, I'm excited when you told me that that day, because I've been telling Chris, like Chris is in this group, and, you know, I've been working with Chris closely because he has a, a large network and works with a lot of people, and we're just trying to help as many people as possible. And I said, you know what, Chris, this is something that I've learned and focused more on relatively recently. I would like to see this pushed because we focus so much on, much on heart and lungs, 
you know, COPD and congestive heart failure is a huge portion of this. Oh, and knee problems and ankle knee issues. Problems yeah. and ankle issues, yeah. yeah. Or, or preventing those issues, you know, because these are preventative too. Like, yeah, your knees are like brake pads. You don't got bad knees now, you'll get them. You know, it's coming. Um, so, you know, o over a long enough lifetime, depends how active you are when you're young. And so dealing with all these conditions and, and especially health conditions that are hyper important, we only have so many hours a day. I'm sitting there hurting because I'm like, man, this is, this is a, you know, a lot of people affected by this, you know, physically and psychologically. You know, I mean, I, I, I've got in on the forums and there's, especially for women, you know, like if they have like genital herpes, they're so afraid that it like they don't go have children, you know, or like they have a C-section or, you know, maybe they wor read about complications with that. And it just, you know, you're like, man, this, this seems like a pretty simple thing. Like, why Ooh, Imagine getting a good paper done on this and, and publishing it in Spanish and English. Yeah, the truth is that's probably where somebody shows up at my door and you know, <laughs> takes me out. But <laughs> if it, you know, it is true with this industry. It's like you know, w whenever you start, you know, I've never used the word you know, C U R E. You start talking about that too much, and you either the wrong people start showing up, or you get people like, oh, blasphemy. <laughs> and, and so that's where I'm not going to sit there. It's like, oh, we're here to cure you. What I can say, it is dramatically going to improve your condition. Regard, like I know it will. Like I'm hyper confident in that into what I feel like is let's call it remission put it into remission and keep it there um, but regardless it's going to dramatically improve but I would like to see it be completely eradicated from your blood work and I've, I've seen it you know, several times so um, that's that's the confidence and that's why like you know I know there are let's say other you know uh, stem cell clinics or sources out there I'll be clear you know like the sources of stem cells in the quad laboratory the next thing is the physicians that's administering it, and the next thing is just the convenient location. Um, and I've just seen the closest thing you're going to get to miracles with these cells, and so I've, I've just stayed loyal with this. Like, look, this is the cells I've done to heal my body, my friends, family, um, you know, people that I've referred, several thousand people at this point, and I just stay loyal. Um, there, there, there is. I bring this up. I'm not going to name the clinic, but I did for a while. Um, after I'd, I'd already got, you know, introduced to stem cells, I, I was um, you know, working with a clinic in Puerto Vallarta. Um, and they're, they're quite popular. They, they target towards Americans. Unfortunately, that facility tried to develop their own laboratory. And at that time, uh, it was a CD cells laboratory and fired them as, as a client. You know, so they could no longer, you know, use and endorse CD cells. But by trying to develop their own laboratory, one, there's a conflict of interest, but two, there's of course. Some, some unethical issues that happened there. That they, they were never able to accomplish a new laboratory, and their current lab source is unknown. And this is a very small community, so that is kind of concerning. I mean, especially, you know, you go to these congresses, and my main physician I work with, um, you know, he, he's you know, very famous in Mexico. Um, and and I, I, I would like to, you know, in the future, if we do a Q&A, um, you know, have him in there. Again, his English isn't the best. You know, try to go to school for 14 years and then regurgitate. Yeah, it. but both of us are bilingual. I mean, I'm not perfect in Spanish, but, you know, I can help him. And you, I'm yeah. sure you can help him too. Yeah, yeah so it, it, it's um, it, it just, just that's typically how it works, sit side by side, but, you know, get to see him and free him. And, I mean, he has some unbelievable stories. I, I, I'll leave one last one that was, like, one of the neatest I ever heard from him that is really cool. And it's a factor of, like, okay, what if I do too many? Sales and this, that, and the other, and this is the best I ever heard him tell it. Um, uh, and I've never heard him tell it to a big group. He just told it to me one night at his house. Whenever he was going through his specialty, so he's OBGYN. Uh, you know, he's delivered a thousand babies in his first year of medicine. Thousand. Wow. After, yeah, it blew me away. It's a lot of work. Doctors in Mexico are of another level, and they make them go to like a little community, yeah. you know, in BFE, and like they're the town doctor. That's what they do here in Panama as well. Yeah. Well, you know. the, and the, so that's just why I say people are concerned about physicians. The experience levels of high-level physicians in Mexico is incredible. I mean, they really know what they're doing, or they, they wouldn't have made it this far. This is extremely competitive in Mexico. But anyway, he while he was going through that, he was working um, at a laboratory for specialty, and I can't remember the exact weeks, but there's a certain cutoff for 
uh, babies that are born premature. Is that 26 or 28 weeks? I can't, I can't remember. I can't remember. Um, and, and basically, if they're born prior to that date, I mean, the, the chance of fatality is extremely high. Um, and so this baby was born, like, a whole lot, I think, three or four weeks prior to that. Like, it was really bleak. What had happened is there was triplets, and uh, the placenta had burst for one of the triplets. And so what can happen is that all of a sudden, you know, you can end up with an infection in there, and it can harm the other babies and multitude of issues. So they're like, okay, we're going to have to do an emergency C-section and take these babies out. You know, they're going to keep them in the incubators. And then there was this one, uh, you know, baby that was out of there, and they said, you know, they'll probably be you know, dead by the next day. And then, um, you know, uh, Dr. Romo, his, he's my main physician I worked with, he goes, he's like, why, why don't we try this out? Like, why not? Okay, like let's do 300 million, and so they put 300 million directly into the umbilical cord of this like one pound baby. I mean this tiny little fetus. Okay, and long story short, they're about 10 years old now. They're all three the same height, and they're happy and healthy and wonderful. <laughs> That's amazing. And, and, and like and Miguel shows me a picture with them, and I'm like, holy cow! So I was like, Miguel, that's the perfect answer I've ever heard to. Well. I'm doing say 300 million or 500 million. Am I doing too many? If 300 million, <laughs> one pound baby. <laughs> one pound baby. Yeah, so that's why I say for a lot of issues people have, um, you know, we try to keep costs down as much as possible. But you know, even Dr. Reardon, he says that he's like, look, he's like, you don't have a stem cell problem. You have uh, you have a numbers problem. You might have an issue that takes hundreds and hundreds of millions stem cells to fix, and you know, you see some improvement by just doing a few hundred million, but it's going to take a lot more over a long enough period of time. It's taken you decades to get to the point you're at, you know. And so that, 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 that's just that's that side of things of, like, you know, as far as doing too many, you know. I mean, we, we have a certain amount that we do in one session, you know. But um, as far as over time, I mean, I do them all the time. And I'm pain-free and healthy as a horse. Yeah, I know people that are, they go in, you know, twice a year, get their, yes. so, sit down so, and get their stuff done. Yeah, I do a good job of abusing myself. I decided I want to get into you know, motocross you know, after 30 again. That was a poor choice. Um, <laughs> since just got into desert racing now. It's not quite as bad. But um, I live in the Baja Peninsula. So, you know, so that. But, you know, I break something every now and then. And, you know, you get the stem cells in there quick after an injury, and it really heals. And so, you know, bring that up. We're, you know, uh, we're coming up on an hour, but we're on the cusp of, you know, I think a huge bull run, you know, in crypto. Um, you know, I, I think I attribute Randy to getting me into the, the Richard Hart community. Um, yeah. I was following in forums, and you were the first one to mention. I always, you know, followed you in that forum. I was like, what is this? Bought, yeah. early, bought heavy at basically these levels. My biggest buys was about these levels of late 2020. <laughs> really? One tenth? Oh, wait. So, so three, are you talking about P hex or E hex right now? P hex has been, I, I've been looking mostly at P hex because P hex is at, you know, I bought my heaviest range ever was 0029 through 0, 0, Okay, so I'm about to say 0, 0, 003. Yeah. Wow. And then we went all the way up to 56 cents. <laughs> yes. That's yes. 100, about 160 X. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote that and I did, you know, I didn't sell dead top, but like I, I was seeing some euphoria in the forties. I was so staked. I mean, I mean, my goodness, I could be just totally made if I had staked so much of it, but I did well in that one. And, you know, so I, and again, still ETH and everything else. And so I, I just say with anybody that, you know, if you're in the community with Randy and, you know, you're working on financial independence, you know, you're working on wealth, you don't have your health. That's how I got here. I kind of, I got to have all my time to myself and like, ooh, I can kind of do whatever I want. And then you actually start paying more attention to your body. So oh, yeah. You have the time because you're not so focused on whatever is it you got to do. You're like, oh, I can do whatever I want. Like, something hurts or something's bothering you and, and you become way more hyper-focused on that and, and just know, you know, there are tools available that you typically can't get in the United States that are available here. And, you know, we'd be happy to help you with that, um, you know, or at least point you in the right direction if, if we don't have it. So. Absolutely. So that's what my journey is now is the the weight loss. I want to get back down to my 
when I got out of the Navy, I was 230 pounds. So right now I'm 110 pounds more than that. Embarrassing, but you know, it's uh, that ha that's what happens in life. I gained all my, most of my weight. I went from 270 up to 370 in about a three year period after my son was born. They call it nesting and boy, did I, did I really yeah. nest. <laughs> and then, and then COVID hit, you know, those first, uh, that first six months of COVID where you're sitting around bored out of your mind, making cookies cause you're locked down, uh, depends on what country you're in, but Panama is pretty bad. And, uh, carry it really well. are you, are you, how tall are yeah. you? I'm six foot two. Okay. That helps. Yeah. yeah. So uh, people, people call me like, uh, uh, Shrek, you know, <laughs> like just like, <laughs> just like Shrek. So, uh, yeah. Um, I just want to get back down to my military weight and then I'd be happy with that. Uh, my, my post boot camp weight when I was 18, I was a uh, 197 and that's the skinniest I, I can remember since I was 16. So I don't think I'm going back there, but I, I sure be happy about 220 to 230. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, so the peptides are helping and, uh, just eating right and, you know, low carb diet for me. I'm not doing the keto thing and stuff, but I'm doing very, very low carb, no sugars, no pastas, no bread. Uh, and that seems to be working well. Um, and then, you know, I'd like to do this as well, do the stem cells and see if, see if that helps uh, heal some things. I did, uh, when I was living in Mexico, uh, uh, in September of 2021 or 2020, when Panama opened the airport, we immediately escaped and we went, we moved to Acapulco, uh, and spent some time there. But when I was in Mexico, I started to have, um, uh, I was getting a lot of kidney stones and, um, so having not full on kidney failure, but I was down to a 60% flow rate, which is really bad, uh, especially for my age. I was only what, 40, 48 at the time. And uh, I ended up healing my kidneys, got them back to 100% flow rate for just by eating right and uh, getting rid of uh, folates, uh, not, yeah, or not folates, uh, uh, geez, green leafy vegetables, which have the, uh, what's the crystals in them? Oh, I can't remember them. Uh, cal yeah, cal calcium. Calcium folate. That yeah. or, I'm pretty sure that's what that's what it is. If it's not, correct me in the comments. It's okay. I won't be I won't be offended. But they're the crystals that form as a defense mechanism in plants, and um, that's what my stones were. And I went down the deep dive, and I I learned how to heal myself. You know, uh, drinking lemon juice with cayenne pepper every morning uh, when I wake up, and uh, you know, just taking hydrania root and a bunch of other roots. The, all these things helped, right? And about six months later, I had a hundred percent flow rate again. And the, the next time when I next passed my kidney stone, the passing was so easy because I was doing lemon juice every morning, which dissolves the crystals and it makes them smooth. So it came out so easy. And that's when I was able to get, get it tested to see what kind of kidney stone it was. And they said, Oh, it's calcium folate. I'm like, Oh, Oh, calcium oxalate. Sorry. That's an oxalate. And, uh, and, you know, I, I was able to heal it. So I'm a true believer in, you know, using alternative methods uh, to, to heal myself. Because because the doctor in Mexico, all he wanted me to do was go on meds. Right. You know, he's like, oh, you need to take medication for this to, to keep your... I'm like, no, I'm not going on meds, doc. I want to find out a natural a natural way to do this. And uh, that's there's what I still, think. Yeah, there's still oh. traditional medicine doctors here. So just to be clear, it's not like every doctor in Mexico would be like, oh, stem cells, weird. Yeah, uh, they're, they're still, you know, traditional, you know, pharmaceutical drugs, that route. Like you, you have to. And that's where we you know, make it a little easier for you is, is put you with doctors that are following the natural medicine path. And, um, yeah. you know, our, our primary physician is Dr. Miguel Romo. But technically in our network, there, there's several hundred physicians, orthopedic surgeons, uh, you know, various you know, cardiologists, various different physicians that can assist. But, um, yeah, he's exactly right. And, you know most physicians out there just want to medicate and cut you know if they don't have the yep. food, they just really make as much money as they can as quick as quick as they can <laughs> yeah it's a business it's that's they're they're in the business of of getting you to use their products that they have um and so that's just it was so funny know. this urologist all he cared about because my son was what two and a half at the time he asked me he goes is your son circumcised oh, i'm like gosh. i'm like no. <laughs> and he goes, I'll do it for you today. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> he's keeping his meat doc. He's keeping yeah. his meat. <laughs> that, that one's still one of the ones that really are, you know, that and, you know, the vaccines, but yeah, with circumcising, it's like, 
wait till he's 16 or 18 and be like, do you want to go do this? Yeah. You know, let him choose then. But you know, the Exactly. Thing. It's his option if he wants to do it later in life. I'm not cutting his meat off. Well, <laughs> Choosing that to do it. In any plastic surgery, you think like, well, why would you cut that off? Oh, I heard some background noise out there. Uh, why would you cut that off when it's a little brand new baby? The thing's going to, you know, I say quadruple, but it's you know, yeah. massively grow in size. Like, why would you cut it then? That doesn't make any sense. Then have a huge scar. <laughs> yeah, if it was the eyelids or anything else, you would never do it that young. And so it's just, it's crazy to me that they do that. But Yeah, it's weird things. Humans do weird shit. We do. And, you know, it's, it's still going on. Um, but, yeah, you know, that's that's a big thing. You know, information's out there. You know, you still, some of us, you know, we're trying to get the information out to people, but it is suppressed. Um, oh, you know, you know how it changed our, my wife and I actually had a fight about it before the baby was born. She's like, oh, you know, we want to make sure we got to get him. Uh, the doc, the hospital wants us to, uh, as a package, they're also going to circumcise us. No, 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 they're not. We had a big fight about it in the, on the car ride home. And I got her home and I, I made her watch a couple of YouTube videos of how it's done. And she goes, there's no way in hell they're doing that to my son. <laughs> it, it is. Yeah. Cause you know, I, I mean, even, you know, my wife, like we, we have a daughter, but you know, we, we plan on having more kids. And that was one of the things I was adamant about with having a son. She's like, Oh no, like, you know, we have like that. And like, no, and they can decide when they get older. That's an adult decision. It, you know, if they really want that, they're really concerned with that, decide as an adult. It's Absolutely. not our place to decide for them because I assure you, I wish I could have had the choice, you know, when I was a kid and you know, getting into. And then stuff, they don't have all. Things. Yeah. The traumas. We, the, in the, you know, the stuff that you do to a baby, it's it's uh, it, we don't quite understand yet the ramifications of doing something like that to a baby. Yeah, and I, I can think in particular for my daughter. So, you know, it's 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 interesting, you know, like how the, you know, protective side comes out, like with children. But I remember uh, my daughter had just been born and, you know, I paid for a nice private hospital. It was nice. Like it was like a hotel room suite with me in it. Yeah, that's what we had to. We did the same thing here in Panama. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, that's so nice. You know, like you don't see that in the States and it's just all, you know, ugly, beautiful room, convenient. We had a pre-planned C-section. And, um, you know, so we go in there, went in at 6 a.m., 7 o'clock they get started. By 9 a.m., it was me, uh, Fabiola, my daughter, you know, just laying there enjoying being parents now. That exact day, I mean, I was already like, we're not doing the vaccine. Thing. Like, I was like, if, if stuff comes down the road, we'll look more into it. It was like, this was deep, like, in the middle of COVID. And I'm like, I'm out on all of it. And it was like, th there's nothing going in. You know, and so that day, the day she was born, they were going to drag her out to do the tuberculosis vaccine. Yeah, what? immediately. The day she was born, you know, and this is a nice private hospital. I was like, I already said that. Like, oh, sir, it's a concern. And I, mean, I got borderline violent. I was like, if she leaves this room, like, I'm coming after you. I don't care if somebody else takes her out of this room. I'm coming after you. So you better make damn sure she does not leave this room. <laughs> I, was, I was losing it because I could just, you know, at that time, I mean, mind you, I'd be coming. We, uh, we were all at that eight, nine level of, uh, of anxiety. Yeah, you know, because I even, you know, at that time, I mean, I'm vaccinated and, you know, it's, it's referring to you know, the, the known one. I, I don't know yeah. if there's still words, still Q on, all these social media platforms. Be careful. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, uh, but the main one, um, you know, I, I had, you know, wife and, I, and, and there was, you know, none of my physicians, but there were, say, other physicians out there, or people she worked with, like, oh, you haven't done it yet. And she's like six months pregnant. And I'm like, there's no way. No way in hell. But, I mean, and, and so it was enough, you know, fighting all that. And then finally, like, the day she's born, I'm just like, no. And, you know, I look. I look back, you know, it's like I never got the tuberculosis vaccine. I, I look back through my military record. They didn't give it to me in the military. They gave me everything else. So, you know, I got loaded up. But uh, You sure you're not talking about the hepatitis? No, nope, it's tuberculosis. Why it's the hell would it? Uh, yeah, that is it, weird. It is, you know, like they do have in Mexico. I'm like, look, we're living well. She's not going to be anywhere where anybody's got tuberculosis. And so, 
Um, you know, and then and then there's tons of other ones. I don't know. Have you looked into um, like the like tetanus? Yeah, like tetanus recently. Look how many of them there is. There's like you know, one not long after they're born, one by two, one by four, one by eight, another one by 14. Well, and, and you and I, because we're in the military, we got it in the military as well. I know because I was one of the ones administering it. Yeah, you roll, roll it up and get the gauntlet, you know. Yeah, I, 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 yeah I, I love all the stuff they give you and you still get it. Like, and then you're super, like pills. Yeah. we get super sick for a week afterwards. Oh, yeah. You know, get the big knot in the back, too. Um, yeah, so uh, what, what was that? Penicillin? I can't remember what that was. Oh, you're talking about the shots. Yeah, yeah, the shots. Maybe. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I, I mean, all these things, you know, and, you know, I, I remember th this is kind of an important one. Uh, maybe it'll come up later. But I remember when I was in the Air Force and I was uh, I was dating a girl who was a nurse and I, uh, I was about to go to uh, Korea. And they wanted you to get the smallpox vaccine. And, huh? you know, yeah, the smallpox vaccine. You know, the, you know, the, at this time, this was 2000, 2011, still, yeah. And um, at the time, I, you know, worked out like crazy. My arms were really tanned, like had nice looking arms, you know, superficials, whatever. Um, and, I, and I didn't want to get that big, like, pus filled sore in there, you know. And so I'm sitting there like, I just don't want that. And I'm like, Ride Sign me off. do everything else crazy is like if i get smallpox we're done anyway like if if they if they throw you know biological weapons on us in korea we're all done like i'm not worried about the vaccine you know and so uh you know i was telling her i was like man i really don't want to do that she's like why don't you just tell me you're allergic to eggs I'm like, what, what eggs? she's like yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not even the real one anyway she's like that's just to see if you'll have a reaction to the real one they're just testing on everybody I'm like wow yeah. you know and so i was like all right and so i went in there Allergic to eggs. Didn't didn't have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> genius, man. Nice, yeah. uh, that's genius. <laughs> so, they yeah. tried to get my they tried to give my son the Hep A shot when he was born, and uh, and I um, I was so upset about it that the the doctor was like, "What's what's your problem, Randy? What's your problem?" I said, "Listen, nobody. Wait, no, not, not, sorry, not Hep A. Hep B. Yeah, you know." Yeah. Hep A, A is for ass, B is for blood. You know, that's right. that's that's a blood. It's usually sexually transmitted, you know, that type of thing. So, and, and nurses, we get it in nursing school. So you have to get a, a, a series of three. Uh, if you want to be, if you want to work in healthcare, you need a series of three. That's, that's normal for Hep B, but that's given to adults. Now, all of a sudden, they want to give it to babies and, uh, and the, the day they're born. And I said, the day, the, the, that's what gets me, the day. The day they're born, and I said, "There's no way in hell you're giving this kid anything when he's born." And the doctor's like, "Oh, but Randy, this is this is what we do." I said, "Since when?" I'm, my blood pressure was going up. I'm sure my yeah. face was red. I'm like, yeah. since when do you fucking give children a baby, a newborn baby, Hep B shots? Since when? Yeah. And what are the chances of them having sex and getting transmitted Hep B, you know, or or something with a dirty needle? Or, or something like that, drug, you know, drug users. That's another way that hepatitis gets transferred, right? Um, look, Pamela Anderson Lee, she got hepatitis C because she yeah. was a, because she did some eh, iffy stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. So so my newborn isn't getting into that stuff. <laughs> so that, that, that is what gets me is just immediately it's a fresh, perfect little baby yeah. that just I mean, look, we do cellulose madres from placenta and umbilical tissue. Right. We just left that perfect tissue. Yeah. We don't need anything else. Like just just the boobies, man. Just yeah. the boobies. <laughs> just the boobies. Yeah, and that's another important one is, is doing that for sure. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it is crazy, you know, and I mean I guess we can probably save some of this for the next one. Um, you know, just the not really like medical conspiracies, but medical truths that is just like, what are they doing? And yes. and, 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 and it's what's happening is they're doing it right to our faces and nobody pushes back against it right you know, that 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 is what gets me they're they're injecting all these babies like oh my doctor told me so it's like what control your own life you know like you have children take care of your children because you know nobody yeah, and educate them. yourself educate. educate there's so much great information out there um that we have no reason anymore to be naive they they said that the internet was supposed to make us smarter because we had access to all the knowledge uh, apparently it's making us dumber 
Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. And and more hyper aware by the day of just how messed up everything is. You know, that's yeah. daunting. But then at the same time, you know, if you're focusing on learning new options, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll kind of wrap it up with that. Is a lot of people, you know feel this bleak outlook when they get some type of chronic issue, whether it's type 2 diabetes and they're like, oh, great, now I'm going to deal with this. I can't eat what I want, and I'm going to end up with peripheral neuropathy and later all these issues. Or, oh, I got a, you know, COPD because I, you know, enjoyed cigarettes and cigars back in the day and tissues are messed up. And then, you know, then they might actually still have, you know, a decade or, or decades left even with that condition, but they're miserable. And then their attitude is so bad. Like, that's what I deal with all the time. And how many patients I talk to, when I finally get them, I'm like, look, you know, there, there is outlook. I can, like, you can almost see it in their attitudes, how much improvement they're showing before they even come and get treatment because they feel like, you know, hey, at least there's something that can try to help this. It's not yeah, just a yeah. pharmaceutical burden. And then when they actually get treatment, you just get called. You're like, oh, my gosh, like, th- this is. I didn't realize how many years I just built myself in a depression because I was either in, you know, so much pain or, you know, I just, I knew I had family history of this issue and it was going to get me and I was just looking on my shoulder, you know, wondering when is this going to come? And, and, and that's more on the cancer side of things. And just, just to touch base, these stem cells are also, they don't treat cancer, but they're, they're anti-cancerous in the sense that a lot of these tumors form as like a last-ditch effort to heal certain lesions within the body. Dr. Reardon goes into that in the book, Stem Cell Rising Tide. Again, plug it in, read that. You get no incentive out of it other than it's just easier for me to talk to somebody that's, that's read that because, you know, I, I can't sell you treatments. I can just, you know, show you a way to get them So because it's difficult to navigate getting the treatments. But um, anti-cancerous, it heals your organs, and we're all going to deal with this at some point. The earlier you start looking at it and addressing it, the less pain and issues you're going to go through later and the less money because... You know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of a cure. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Dan, I think we should wrap it up there. It's a little over an hour. It's about an hour and 15 minutes. That's a lot of information for folks. And uh, if any, if anybody wants to reach out to you, what's the website? So cbmedicalcenters.com. Okay, centers.com. All right. Yeah, so that cool. one's curated to Americans. Just And also that one is kind of more hyper-specific. We, you know, the testimonials on there are only Americans. And only post follow up treatments, we kind of put the most dramatic ones on there. I mean, we can get inundated with tons of old ones, but you know, orthopedic treatments, patients with lung issues, patients with heart issues, had one you know, a dramatic case where he'd done billions of cells being attacked by a bison. Specific videos, um, you know, and, and that one's particular for this location up here. Most people, this is going to be the most convenient location, but by all means, if you want to go to PV, you want to go to Guadalajara, you know, we can set you up with all of them. Just be aware the main thing is it's the same stem cells, just at a different location. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, thank you, sir. And I look forward to uh, our next ones are going to be live. So we can have Q&As and all kinds of stuff where you guys could ask questions. We'll have doctors on. Um, I, have, I have some people in mind that I'd like to bring on as well. And um, we'll, have, we'll have discussions and, and see where we can help you guys out. Perfect. Thanks, Dan. All right. Thank you, Randy. Have a good one. All right. I'm going to.